November 2023. Self-discovery in serene surroundings. Participants were treated to a wonderful, soul-fulfilling experience at the Life Positive Spiritual Festival held at Rimgar, near Nainital in July. Navni Chawla reports. The weather in Rimgar was cool and pleasant in July. A perfect start for the Life Positive Spiritual Festival that began in full swing on the 9th, at the Aurobindo Ashram there. Since many people had joined this event from Delhi, coming to the Rimgar Mountains was a huge relief for them from Delhi's harsh and hot July weather. The Aurobindo Ashram extended a warm and heartfelt welcome to all its guests, exuding an atmosphere of serenity, inclusivity, and spiritual harmony. From the moment visitors stepped onto the ashram grounds, they were greeted with a sense of reverence and hospitality, deeply rooted in the ashram's values and traditions. Here's what the Aurobindo Ashram's experience was for its guests. Tranquil entrance, as guests approached the entrance of the Aurobindo Ashram, they were welcomed by a serene and well-maintained environment. The path leading to the main reception area was adorned with lush greenery, fragrant flowers, and tranquil fountains. The quiet atmosphere set the tone for a peaceful and contemplative stay. Warm greetings, at the reception area. Guests were met with warm and friendly greetings from the ashram staff. These individuals were not merely administrative personnel, they embodied the ashram's spiritual principles, radiating a sense of inner peace and kindness. A person who deserves special mention here is Ms. V.J. Laxamy, who was managing the ashram at that time. She was very kind and took a personal interest in making the stay of all the delegates at the ashram a memorable one. Orientation and Information Guests were provided with orientation and information about the ashram's facilities, guidelines, and daily schedules. This included details about daily meditation sessions, yoga classes, and any happy participants at the retreat. Orientation and information Guests were provided with orientation and information about the ashram's facilities, guidelines, and daily schedules. This included details about daily meditation sessions, yoga classes, and any orientation and information. Guests were provided with orientation and information about the ashram's facilities, guidelines, and daily schedules. This included details about daily meditation sessions, yoga classes, and any cultural or spiritual events happening into the ashram during their stay. Simplicity and Respect The ashram encouraged a culture of simplicity and respect. Guests were often requested to adhere to a code of ethics, such as not plucking ashram flowers or talking too loudly in the ashram premises or meditation hall, which reflected modesty and reverence for the spiritual environment. Meditation and Contemplation The ashram offered guided meditation sessions, open to guests. These sessions allowed visitors to immediately immerse themselves in the ashram's tranquil and spiritually charged atmosphere. Communal Meals Guests were invited to partake in communal meals at the designated dining hall, three times a day, according to fixed time schedules. These meals were not only nourishing for the body but also served as opportunities for social interaction and spiritual discussions. The food was typically simple vegetarian fare, prepared with mindfulness, reverence for Sri Aurobindo and the mother, the ashram held deep reverence for its founders, Sri Aurobindo and the mother. Guests were invited to sit in the mother's temple for daily meditations. This temple had walls of glass, and it gave an open view of the great Rungar Hills. Sitting in this temple was one of the most soothing experiences at this ashram. On the first day, when all the delegates reached the ashram, they were served a simple and tasty lunch at the ashram's dining hall and then rooms were allotted to them. The guests had taken long journeys, and some of them had come from far-off places such as Mumbai, Pune and Hyderabad. Everybody rested in the afternoon and later in the evening, all the delegates were gathered in a hall to meet each other. In this icebreaking session, the group came closer and shared a lot about themselves and their life journeys. This was followed by the guests having a gala time at the retreat, he energizing yoga session in the morning jevening tea. The first day was concluded with a meditation at the mother's temple followed by a scrumptious dinner. On the second day, Life Positive had planned an excursion for all the guests to the Neem Karli Baba Ashram, which got cancelled as it had been raining heavily since morning. 
It was unsafe to travel on that day due to the high probability of landslides occurring. After being disappointed by the weather, the guests were cheered up by LP's team, with many planned activities, such as a movie screening of Sri Aurobindo's life journey, blissful and contemplative walks in the ashram gardens, flower watching, guided meditations, bhajan singing, and storytelling sessions about how the mother turned an empty mountain into a fully bloomed ashram. Although the guests remained happy and entertained at the ashram, all of them were very eager to go to Neem Karli Baba's temple. Many of the guests ardently prayed for clear weather on the next day so that they could do the outdoor activities planned as per Life Positive's itinerary. On the third day, everyone's prayers were heard, and the weather was very supportive to carry out the road trips as planned. Life Positive decided to make the third day a full day trip, with a first stop at Neem Karli Baba's ashram, a stop for lunch in Gar Mukteswar, a visit to Mukteswar Temple, and the last stop at the Balu God Waterfalls. Neem Karli Baba's Kenchi Dam Ashram was a profound spiritual experience for many. Some of the delegates who were deeply devoted to Babaji Maharaj felt as if it was a miracle to be present at his humble abode. This day was full of love, happiness, and excitement. The delegates who were above 70 showed immense enthusiasm and courage by climbing up the temple steps and accomplishing the Holy Shivji and Shakti Peets pilgrimage or darshan. Main to Bilkal Trip Hogi, I feel fulfilled and whole, said Kataki Jayakar, one of the delegates, after finishing her darshan. Many participants were too tired to visit the Balu God waterfalls and wanted to return to the ashram to rest. So, only one taxi with about five delegates carried on up to there. On the way, some guests stopped the car and bought locally made honey, soaps, fruit jams, dry fruits, etc. One of the delegates insisted that she wanted to buy the famous apricot oil which was specially available in its purest form here. The delegates who were above 70 showed immense enthusiasm and courage by climbing up the temple steps and accomplishing the Holy Shivji and Shakti Peets pilgrimage or darshan. Main to Bilkul Trip Hogi, I feel fulfilled and whole, said Kataki Jayakar, one of the delegates, after finishing her darshan. Many participants were too tired to visit the Balu God waterfalls and wanted to return to the ashram to rest. So, only one taxi with about five delegates carried on up to there. On the way, some guests stopped the car and bought locally made honey, soaps, fruit jams, dry fruits, etc. One of the delegates insisted that she wanted to buy the famous apricot oil which was specially available in its purest form here. Visiting the Balu God Waterfalls involved a small trek for a few kilometers to the site. The Balu God Waterfalls After seeking Neem Karli Baba's blessings, everyone got into their respective taxis and started for their lunch stopover at the mystic Mukteshwar Lodge. The scenery on the way was picturesque and magical. The weather was cool as the temperature was dropping. Everyone took out their shawls and jackets as the taxis moved upwards on higher altitudes towards Mukteshwar. The lunch at the mystic Mukteshwar Lodge was a delightful experience. The property was beautiful, vibrant, and cozy. The lunch prepared by the host, Ms. Manju, and her staff was full of heart and love. Everyone thoroughly enjoyed her presence, her food, chutneys, and tea, and the interiors of her small and unique boutique. Homestay the guests left this place with happy faces and tummies. Next, the taxis took everyone to the Mukteshwar Temple. One had to climb many steps to reach the picturesque valley. At the entry ticket counter, the group met their waterfall track guide, Rohan. He was the sweetest and most helpful guy ever, he made sure that everyone was comfortable and even helped by carrying bags. Mr. S. D. Saxena was the only 60-plus participant who came for this track. He heroically walked the uneven path leading to the waterfall. Although this trek was a little treacherous, it was well worth it, an adventure to remember. Sitting in front of the waterfall made everyone so alive, joyful, and happy. Soon the group headed back to the ashram to reach in time for dinner. Miss Sonia Wadwa and her assistant, Benay, reached the ashram for her workshop The Journey of Five Senses and Ecstatic Dance, which she was facilitating at the ashram for the participants. With her icebreaking session, Miss Sonia opened up a world of sensitivity for all the participants. 
The yoga sessions, guided meditations, open discussions on the five senses, quality deep listening, mantra chanting, and body movements created a wave of learning and happiness among them. They learned to connect more deeply with their bodies through the subtle, rhythmic, and mindful body movements as taught by Ms. Sonia to the group. Her energy was infectious, and she emanated good vibrations to everyone. She divided the group into pairs and made them do activities that helped them explore their own sensibilities and imagination. She also made everyone realize how senses were tools to connect with each other. By the end of the fourth day, everyone had fulfilled their purpose of joining the retreat. Life Positive received beautiful video feedback bites from the participants, who captured their experience so beautifully. One can truly say that this retreat was a magical experience, full of nature's beauty, healing, love, and spiritual progress. The event was successfully concluded on the fifth day by gathering everyone in the hall, dancing, and clicking pictures together, with warm hugs. As guests prepared to leave the ashram, they bid farewell with good wishes to each other for their journey ahead. This parting gesture was a reminder of Life Positive's commitment to fostering spiritual growth and inner transformation. In essence, the retreat offered by the Life Positive Foundation and the Aurobindo Ashram embodied the magazine's core values of simplicity, spirituality, and community. It created an environment where guests could find peace and a deeper connection with their inner self. Nadine Chawla a Delhi-based writer has a heart brimming with passion for life and loves capturing the beauty of the world through words.